Hello there. Hi guys. So um, I'm still working on these pages and I had some really good ideas. So I'm going to try and do these last five in this watercolor painting sketchbook ideas video. This is part two. If you want to see part one, I will link it up for you on the video so that you can follow it. But these have been fun. And again, if you want to see more of these process videos, then please let me know because I'm happy to do them. I actually really love to do them. I'm still using these, which has been so much fun. And actually I kind of, I took, I took my brushes out of the wood box because literally there's so many brushes now that um, they didn't all fit there. And I noticed that like this one got caught in one of the little, um, things. And I actually had to soap it to reshape it because I didn't want it to get ruined. So let's take the soap out now. Should be good. It was bent. <laughs> yeah, much better. So, um, good lesson to learn <laughs> if ever you have a really nice brush and something happens and you shut <laughs> you shut a case on it or it like gets up against the side of a case and it bends then all you have to do is just use a little brush soap and let it sit overnight in the shape that you want it and bam you got your brush back so that worked out <laughs> don't know how but it did okay so i'm still experimenting with these three and what was the other the other ones that came with the joseph's Bubik set. This is this one, this one, and there's a travel brush, right? Yep. Yeah, they have the little Z's on them. So these have been really fun. I have been enjoying these like crazy. So I'm going to put these here so that I can keep playing with them. And yeah, so let's go. So I've got different color watercolors. I've got a like a, a copper, a gold, and this rose color kind of rose metallic. It's really pretty. I will link up these below. I got them at Jackson's um, and I'm a Jackson affiliate. So if you do use one of my affiliate links, then please let me know about it because especially on my group page, because I do a giveaway, a big giveaway. And actually today I was just assigning all of the giveaway um, presents to my winners from August. And I'm really excited for them to get them because there's everything in there, like just major, like there's a paint set that went out, like a full paint set. And then, of course, at the beginning of last month, they gave away six paint sets. And then there's um, some like trios of paint colors. So like some people are going to get three full pans of brand new paint sent from Jackson's so that you could experiment and come up with a bunch of colors and I handpicked them so that you could use them together and just expand your palette and get to know new paint you know especially I tried to find out if the winners of the of last month's giveaways had the paint at all because I wanted to send them paint they hadn't experienced yet so I was really careful to kind of pick out some really nice things but that's what I do with the affiliate links so please use them because that just spurs on more giveaways okay so I did these backgrounds with the granulating paints um, these are besides tundra pink these are from the deep sea set also linked in my materials list below this is the original five that comes with the deep sea which is violet indigo blue and green and then <clears throat> there's a deep sea black and then i ended i added tundra pink which is one of my favorite super granulating colors and then the rest are schmincke colors just that i have mixed like this is my own stormy color and this is my own cherry red color so those are made by me just mixing other colors actually i didn't make them from scratch or anything and then um these are different schmincke colors you can see which ones these are too and yeah so i did the backgrounds first that's in the first video and then we started to add these and now i'm going to start doing these depending on what i think is going to look the best on these little pieces here i have some really cool ideas though so i think Maybe I'll start with this one because so I have a really good idea for this one that might work because it's kind of like a really moody thing. So let's start with the gold. 
trying to think of which. Let's swatch these and see which one of these. Okay, I'm going to use the Joseph Zbuvik Escota Perla 8. And this is for more like finer details. So I'm just adding some water to these. You can spray them also. I love these large things. I actually, it comes in silver too. And there's a, there's also a pink. You should see, it's really pretty. Isn't that beautiful? Some really pretty colors. And that's the silver. Oh, and there's also like a yellow. It's like a, a really pretty, like silvery kind of yellow. Yeah, these are amazing. They You can paint, they're watercolor, but they get thick. So you can do light washes of them over your colors, or you can do heavier washes, um, you know, like paint details over, and you're going to see it right now. Actually, that's, that's what I did with these. You see how much coverage they can give you if you use them a little heavier. Oh, wow, that's really pretty. Hang on. Let's move the camera down so that you can see. Okay, so here's the copper. Oh, that's so beautiful. Let me get you in here. Look at how pretty that is. Yeah, one of my favorites. I actually posted a painting of a woman's face that I did with these um, to accent, and you guys really liked it. It's on the group page right now as we speak actually this is the copper well i guess i don't know there's no names on these this is like this is more of the copper and this is kind of like a bronze kind of color like a deeper like an orangey gold and then this is the traditional gold which i use just a ton of i mean literally i think i bought like 10 sets of this and so i just never have to buy any more at all because I was always worried they were going to sell out of it. But once I found it and then it turned out they never sold out of it. So that was good. They just keep replenishing, which is amazing because it is a beautiful. I don't think I really some people have sent me different ones. Like there's a gold here in this wood box set by Schmincke. And I'll show you the difference. It's really beautiful gold, but it's way different than these so this is the schminka gold see how it's it's a lot more sheer it's just reactive very very different it's more like the schminka watercolor which is beautiful because it just like it will literally glaze over another color so well see adding like that beautiful glistening shade to it so when you need something that's not opaque this is a great silver and a great gold to have by schminka okay pretty huh yeah really beautiful all right let me back out so you can see what i'm doing here I'm getting better with the camera did you notice you guys are always asking me to make sure i get close-ups while i'm doing these things and i've been trying to okay so I'm gonna do this one and I had this idea for this this kind of contrasts too much so I might just use these two colors and then I'm trying to think if there's something else I want to use I don't know let me think here all right, I'm just going to start with the first part of it. I'm thinking what might go over this really well. And I think there's a blue, but let's just start here. So I've got some water. I'm going to take the gold. Now this is where I really could use a very, very nicely defined brush. Oh yeah, and that's what this one does. So, I 
So this is just sketchbook stuff. And I've never really filmed any of my sketchbook stuff. This is just where I work out ideas. But I can see where it's kind of fun to watch because you get ideas yourself, you know. And, um, and I think that that's really, really nice. It's valuable. All right, so I've got my moon there. And I'm going to look at this color. Yep. I really think this is going to be a nice addition to this. I'm not, not opposed to it. It's very strong, so I know it's going to sit over this really well. I need something that's going to show up, but that's still watercolor. So I've got, I should probably do this. Ooh, there's a pretty color. I forgot about that one. So I'm using a very concentrated um, blue. And this one is French Ultra. I figured it was, but just in case, you never know. Yeah, and it's going over the granulation really well. So I think that's going to be fine. I think the key to this, getting this to work out, is being careful what colors I'm going to add over the other colors, because they have to be strong enough for us to see them but then also they have to be they have to go with the rest right because if they don't go with the rest then um yeah then it it's possible this is where my concentration in painting makes me sound like an idiot <laughs> You ever notice that? <sighs> it's really hard to paint and talk at the same time on these things, but I'm I think I'm getting better at it. I just am not used to it, you know? And I don't know why, because I've done so many tutorials. It's not like I haven't painted and uh and taught, you know, on these videos. It's just for some reason, the sketchbook ones, well, I think my tutorials are actually the same way. I don't think there's not a, there's not a time where I'm not stalling, you know? Isn't this pretty? So I'm just kind of like developing a little pattern here. I know at some point, I'm sure I'm going to have to, um, I don't know, maybe I'll get the pattern right to begin with. I don't know. Sometimes when you do these things, you're like, you know, once you've done them, you kind of feel like, oh, I could have done this better. This pattern didn't really work out, but I don't know. I'm feeling really good about this so far. It's the brush. It's the brush. The brush is making it work perfectly. I'm trying to imagine what this is going to look like. I think it's actually too small for me to do two separate parts. So I'm just going to play around with the line weight. And do that one. Okay. So now let's dig into our gold a little more. And we'll put gold parts in. So what are you doing right now? Are you painting along with me? I'm hoping so. 
Or maybe you're relaxing and having coffee and just enjoying watching the paint. Okay, so I just learned that if I don't let it dry in between, it's definitely going to bleed. I don't know why I didn't think of that before, but it doesn't matter. It's sketchbook stuff. And I also just realized, I think I want to put a little, like leave a gap in between each line in this, you know, little wave, because it'd be fun to be, I don't want to cover the beautiful textures of the granulation, you know? Of course, this is going to be a lot easier on a much bigger sheet, but the basic idea is there for me to follow later. And I really love it. It looks really interesting. Yeah, it's really hard to stay so small. Okay, mm, let's try this color. So I'm wondering how your summer was, and I'm also wanting to know more about my new subscribers. I mean, literally, um, I have received 300 new students this in August, which is amazing. Welcome. I'm so excited that you're here, but I don't know you yet. And um, I have like thousands of new subscribers. We reached 100,000 views on this channel in August um, just from painting. So this has to be bigger because otherwise I'm kind of covering some of this beautiful granulation. But... You know, for the purpose of the sketchbook, it's fine. You know, I just don't want to cover any more granulation if I have to. Yeah, so I got all these new subscribers here, and I would love to know who you are and if you paint and if you have a um, channel yourself that we should be looking at. That is really pretty. I'm wondering... So please introduce yourself to me and tell me a little story about who you are and what you like about the channel, you know? So I wasn't going to go any further with this. I was going to kind of stay with this neat little design, but I almost feel like it's calling to me to go further. So let's just go further. I can always, you know, remember not to go further when I do it later. If I decide to do a bigger piece. It's really cool though. So I'm going to just kind of take these back out and try and leave some of the granulation. I really like the, um, I really like this color and the blue. I don't know if I need more than one. I'm not really sure if I need more than one metallic. What do you think? Let's go back to the blue. I almost feel like it just didn't. I can't really tell. Well, I can kind of. I can't really tell at this scale the difference between the two metallic colors. Love to know your thoughts, though. I do love this, though, that I was able to um, establish a really cool textured background with the... Um, 
the granulating colors, the super granulating colors. And so in a larger piece, this would be so cool to look at because you would still see the super granulating colors. And the idea I'm thinking too, is there are a lot of different shapes we could do. Like literally we could do, um, with this kind of pattern, we could do a dragon, you know, we could do a wolf or a husky. I mean, I'm just doing like a moon because this is just the first thing that came to mind. But now that I'm doing it, there's literally so many shapes, flowers. Maybe we'll do a flower next on something else. Okay, so that's a that's a kind of a neat idea. This just needs to be bigger for it to really like just sit there with me, you know, like make me um, feel like, oh, yeah, that worked out great. Okay, so the next one in this little square here, I'm going to try doing, I'm going to try painting them like the sun, but I want to leave the resemblance of like wistful clouds and I'm not really sure I'm going to do that because I have to I have to do it backwards so we'll see if I manage and I'm not like I'm not penciling them in so okay so far I've got some in there you're going to see them in a second once I close the circle. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to imagine if there were a moon here or a or a sun, what it would look like if clouds were starting to come over it. I don't want too many. Thank God for this brush though, because it really Hmm. So I think the big challenge with this one is getting the shape right without a guideline. But if I would have put a guideline in, you'd see it, you know, so I kind of have to imagine what these need to look like and try not to paint, <laughs> try not to paint over where it should be. So there's this shape right here. And I'm going to close this gap here. Just don't want too much. I'm just kind of doing it by eye right now. I'm kind of like in this, hoping I don't see it wrong and then mess it up. I'm, I'm getting there. So you need a wide enough circle. There we go. Okay, so I just kept getting bigger because I'm trying to work it out in my mind as to what this would look like. And I don't, you know, I don't use masking fluid because it tears the paper and, and I don't really like masking fluid. I think we got to force, challenge our brains to think about these things, you know, and work it out. There. 
All right, just add a little bit thicker gold layer now that I've got my pieces here and then I'll just kind of stand back and see what that looks like. I have to imagine what shape this moon would be though, you know, like it's round, but like, where is it? Because I just, I don't want it to look unround. Well, it looks kind of round. I feel like it looks a little thinner than it should, but maybe that will work. Yeah, it looks good. Okay. Now I'm going to put a couple of little thin gold birds. Perfect. Yay. I like that one. That one's nice. This one's green. So I had an idea for this one. This other one, I think I'm going to put, um, the gold, we're going to paint a, a gold flower in there. Let's see, like a, like some kind of relief print. So I don't want it just in the center. I want it kind of off to the side a little bit, just so that it's a little more interesting. And I want to, I want to try and draw this or render this flower with one stroke on each, on each gold piece. so that I don't have to go over it multiple times. Because I think having my line weights really nice and thin, this, uh, this brush is perfect for that. So I have to kind of like have it thick enough in the paint for it to just be a one stroke thing, but then also like thicker and thinner lines. Like these lines are a little bit thick, but it doesn't matter because let's get some different line weights. And yeah, it's looking good. This is drying quick. So summer certainly got us all better at doing flowers for sure. Okay. So there was a drop of water here before. I'm just going to try and control it because yeah, there we go. Cause I had dropped water, right? I'm not, I don't love the flower, but I can, I'll get better at it. It's really hard to paint this small for me. You know, I'm just not used to it. I'm used to just painting very large pieces. <laughs> but this is fun. You know, this is really fun to like do more idea work in my sketchbook these days. I really, I wasn't doing it before because I never could find sketchbooks I liked. And now that I have this ability to make my own sketchbooks, I'm like sketchbook crazy. I did a sketchbook beginners course. I have done like all of these videos in my sketchbook, you know, painting a lot more in my sketchbook. <laughs> this is like exploded down here. Can you guys see the pattern? Let me get you closer.
Yeah, it exploded because there was some water on the page. I love how thin this gets. This, this is really good practice. There you go. Really beautiful. So this brush is great for details. Again, this is the Joseph Zbuvik set. Um, it comes with three brushes. They're really well priced for what you get. These brushes are amazing. And you get this, they're all, they all have these really beautiful points on them for details. There's a travel brush, size 10. So I don't know if you can see this, I might have to back out, but it's got like a little lid. I love these. I like the shape of these. They're so cool. It's got a really nice long point and a big belly for the brush. So the travel brush, you could do a lot of stuff in your sketchbook. Okay, so there's the idea. So like a gilded flower over the textured background. It's kind of neat. I think that would look way better if it was just bigger. Yeah, I don't know. I like, so far I like, I'm trying to think of which ones I like best. So far I like this idea best is cool and I kind of like this idea but I don't know that I would do the entire thing I think I would do a shape instead of the entire thing you know um, so for this one let's try layering I've got this let's see what this color is in here I've got this color that's in my little palette and I must have put that there for a reason Ooh. Oh, it's a beautiful green. Okay, we're going to use this. So I'm just going to take some so that I can control how thick it is because I must have had this paint left over and so I put it in here so that I, I could use it. It's a beautiful, like, uh, very deep green. It's beautiful. So let's see how these do for leaves. Let me get a little. I know it'll do this really well. Oh, wow. Wow. It makes really great. Oh, geez. This is beautiful. Oh, it's so easy to stop. Oh, those are so nice. Okay, wait, I gotta, let me pull the other one and just see if this does the same kind of really beautiful shapes. This is the other set. This is the long red one from Alvaro Casnet, and this is a size 10. It comes with a bunch of different sizes, but it's got a bigger belly, so I tend to use the bigger belly ones for... For leaves hang on I screwed that up this has got a lot of water it might it might be too much water for this little tiny yeah I like the leaves better with this one but I don't know I might have to use the smaller brush yeah I like the leaves better because it's got a bigger belly you can't really, you can't get this one to lay down, you know, like this one does a great smaller leaf, but you can't get it to really lay down and give you the, the different color variations because it doesn't hold enough. You need like a larger belly brush. Does that make sense? So let's choose the size eight in the Avaro. This is by Escoda too. I love this brush set. I'm so excited. I didn't open these right away and literally it's 
see if you guys could see what I'm doing. Look at how pretty. All right, so. Uh, no, the bigger one works better. Yeah, the bigger one works better. So I'm just going to paint large leaves on here. I don't really want a small leaf. So I need the size 10 because this is just the perfect balance of water and yeah see how it gets like the darker color there it's the perfect balance of water and um yep i like that so i'm just kind of practicing my leaves and getting used to the brush and figuring out pretty yeah, here. I'm trying to do it so you guys can see. So I lay the belly of the brush down. Put a little more paint in there. Tip, belly, tip. Slowly, because when I do it more slowly. Oh yeah, perfect. Okay, has to have enough water in it. Although I don't mind a little bit of the dry brush. There we go. Tip, belly, and tip. I'm almost there. Okay, that's what I want, the longer shape. Okay, so first, <laughs> remember it's a sketchbook, it's a sketchbook. Keep reminding myself of that. Um, I'm trying to think of how I want to lay this down. Okay, so I'm going to do this one. Awesome. Perfect. And I can go back and sure up my line a little bit. too much too much paint it doesn't look bad I meant to mention too I talk a lot about trees but I forgot to talk about leaves if you haven't checked out my photo file um, you should check it out because I have been walking around taking a lot of pictures because you know, it's about that time. I need more water. It's about that time. We change seasons. So we're going to do a lot more leaves, you know, a lot less f flowers probably. And um, as a result, you got to think about, you know, how these things actually look. So I was taking pictures of tree trunks today. And foliage you know just to kind of remind me as I'm doing these projects I need to change the position of this hang on this is so pretty isn't it it's beautiful um, and the reason why is because a lot of times we'll forget that leaves overlap each other they don't always you know they're not always sparse and that's just the order of things you know so by never painting a leaf over another you're losing the ability to have that really unique kind of really interesting look you know If you notice, I'm taking different weights of the paint. Cool. I love it. Look at that compared to that beautiful yellow that we added in the background. Doesn't it look stunning? Okay. Now with the gold. Let's see if I can pull this off. I might have to switch to a smaller brush, though. Let's just do... 
some of it with the larger brush. I think I'm on this one I'm going to come from here. Yeah, I need the smaller brush definitely. Yep, let's switch. It's too much water for the gold paint. Okay, so let's go to a smaller brush and see if I can do it with the Zbuvik size 8. Let's get a lot of paint. Let's get this one to be a little longer. There we go. And I'm going to let this one come off the page so that you don't see it. And this. Good. Mm -hmm. This is so pretty. I think this is one of my favorites so far. So see how good this, um, these brushes are for relief painting. So literally if you're looking for brushes to go around details, these are excellent for it. And there's actually a few in the, um, in the different sets by Escoda. Getting a little too much paint here. And I'm in dangerous territory right now because I did not wait for this to dry. So I'm going to do my best to paint around it. I just love the yellow. Oh my gosh. I should have done more yellow. Like introductions of regular colors into your... Oh, she's back. I've got two huskies. And for those of you who don't know them, they're adorable. You can look them up under Nifty Husky on Instagram. Nifty. Yep, they're nifty, especially when they're ready to play. And this time every night, literally, they start, they wake up and they start to try and play with each other. That's Misty. It's pretty funny. <laughs> Misty. Come on, Misty. I should probably give you a picture of her so that you can see. So that's Misty and that's Sky in the background because <laughs> she sounds so ferocious. I don't want you to be scared. <laughs> She's really not. <laughs> She's so pretty, pretty, pretty girl. They're both beautiful girls. Sky's like an empress. She's beautiful and elegant and, you know, she's just lovely. Okay, so uh, where was I going? I actually painted this one really, really long here, and I don't know why. I just didn't didn't think about it. I want to try, you know, it's really difficult. Let me just tell you, this design could have used a much larger piece. Uh, so, but you never can tell. I mean, this is a great way to get started, you know, on the smaller areas because they're not really intimidating. But I certainly need to um, do this on a much bigger, much, much bigger sheet so I can see what I'm doing more. Okay, so there we go. I love the way this looks though. This whole idea is just, just beautiful. It's really lovely. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to stop there because literally it's over the yellow and I don't want to paint over the yellow. And if this was a bigger piece, these colors would be amazing together and it would look so terrific. So you get the idea. I'm getting better as these are going on. <laughs> I'm like liking them more as we're moving forward. Um, 
Okay, so my final one, I had an idea for lovebirds. And I thought that would be really cute. But I'm just trying to decide if, like, how I want to execute them. Like, the birds versus the leaves and what color. Um, so, just thinking about it, like, I think I'm going to try... See, so we're going to put the, the birds in in gold. The question is, which one of these colors do I want to use over this tundra pink? Because it's really, really beautiful. And I almost want to use this, like, this copper color over the tundra pink. Let's try the copper. Why not? I mean, I have to just keep reminding myself, it's a sketchbook. It's a sketchbook series. So the idea is just the tundra pink and one other color um, to see if it's not too plain, you know, so we'll start there. So I'm going to go ahead and use this brush again because it's, it's so nice for the size of a sketchbook and let's see. So I'm going to come up, try and get really thin. And I want to build out these branches, but I don't want them to be too thick. I want a mixture of like very thin lines and some thicker lines. So I'm just picking my brush up a little bit to try and get these line weights to be Yeah, that's really pretty. And I don't want it to be too busy up there. That's pretty good. I think I'll leave it there for now. Let's go ahead down here. more water in my brush. This doesn't hold a lot of water, this brush, so it, it is really good to get thin lines um, without just too much water. Pretty easy, actually, and if I let my hand shake just a bit, you know, it gives a little bit more of that natural line. This color is beautiful on, on the tundra pink. Okay, I don't want to go too crazy. Let's paint our little birds in. So I think I'm just going to do like... like that. And then round. I want a nice plumpy bird and I don't want the head to look like it's coming off of the body. So there we go. Let's get the other one. It has to be here. And I want like the breast to be touching. So we get the idea that they're lovebirds. And the head's touching too. Like they're in a little kissy kissy. Make that one a little heavier so that it reflects maybe just like a different angle.
Oh, they're so cute. Oh, I love it. Okay, so now the question is, do we continue on with the same color or do we try little blossoms in the lighter gold? So let me see. I'm going to take some of the, the lighter gold and I'm going to try and do those little like those little round blossoms. I think maybe I'll mix it up. We'll do some little because it, it almost I don't know. The lighter gold does almost doesn't show up. No, I don't. Well, it kind of does a little bit. No, let's try this one. Yeah, I think it's better in this color. I'm doing like little almost round teardrop shaped leaves. So they're like little blossoms. Oh, you know, it's cute. I'm going to do little hearts for the leaves. Oh, I love this. I would totally do this in a larger piece in the tundra pink. This is, I think, my favorite of the sketchbook uh, design so far. What about you? Do you think this is the favorite? The little hearts for leaves. I need it to be a little bit bigger so that I can establish the hearts for leaves because <laughs> it's so small. But I love the fact that this design shows off uh, the watercolor underneath the Shemika granulating color. You could also do this with blue. It would look really pretty too. Little hearts. <laughs> so cute. Depending on the angle, it's easier not to do those little hearts. It's much easier now. So normally I would just flip my paper around, but because the camera, this is just so cute. I know you're saying, oh my God, that is so adorable. So any of you who has stayed for this last painting, you got so such a good bonus. You get such a good idea for your sketchbook. Come over to my group page on Facebook and definitely show me what you painted. I'm going to do a much bigger version of this because I just love it. And I think I'm going to play around with some different colors too on it. So that's it. I'm going to keep it. Yeah, that looks, uh, it looks so pretty. This is my favorite one so far. I feel like this needs something more, you know, like I almost, I don't know what would happen if we took some of the purple and if we took some of the purple, like this imperial purple color and filled in a few of the areas because it just doesn't, this just isn't standing out to me. You know what I mean? And I loved the way this one turned out. This was really nice. So like, what if I just try and kind of fill in some of the areas around the gold just to define our, our shape a bit more? I don't know. This might have worked out maybe with a different pattern or something, but right now it needs, I need to go further with it because I just don't really love it. Just looked like it was missing something to me. And this is a good, 
example of the process, you know? Oh, look at that. Once the gold's down and dry, you really can't paint over it. I didn't realize that. How convenient. Okay, I think that's a little bit better. Yeah, I kind of like that better. I just feel like the line weights didn't really turn out really well. They were a little thick because of the... Um, because of the size of it and I just wasn't really well practiced today at getting the line weights smaller. Now my line weights are way better. I'll paint some. I just feel like this is just too coloring book, you know, like it doesn't, doesn't really speak to me as much. I do love the, the green with it. So I'm going to go ahead and put those little heart shaped leaves here that I did before. And so I like the contrast of the green over the purple. It looks really nice. This is a beautiful green. Um, so if you notice, I'm using my pinky to kind of steady my hand so I don't, um, <laughs> she's back. Uh, shh. Misty, they don't want to hear you complain. Leave your sister alone. She really is cute, I swear. <laughs> so now I'm going back. In this flower because it's still I mean at this point I don't like it so I can't really harm it <laughs> you know what I mean I'm cutting like different colors and I think I'm going to add a shot of this um, bright pink this is a uh, a beautiful paint And I'll just kind of go over some of the heavier lines as well with a thicker version of this paint. So now I've got like two different uh, purples and now I'm kind of roughing in this gorgeous um, natural pigment. And this is actually a light fast pink too. I can um, add it to the materials list. Just leave me a comment. And let me know if you want to know what this pink is. Yeah. See what I mean? I just needed something heavier, right? We did. It needed to be just something with a little more, just a little more energy to carry that. And then on the leaves, Let's take a little bit more of this paint. A little thicker. And just kind of strike it in some of the, the leaves because, you know, to be honest, I, I just really don't like things to look like an artist and paint them, you know? And I feel like sometimes if you try to get like somewhere in between it's I think it should be more representational than you know I feel like art looks better when it's not f striving to be photographic than when it's striving to be a little more mystical and looser I just personally feel like it looks better to me and I judge it more on the creative artistic side and I feel like you know odd little brush strokes and stuff are things that we notice the most uh, when we don't stay inside the lines and how we execute that. That to me is really unique and special, you know, because then you start like, oh, look at what they did, you know, and um, you start looking at things differently. Okay, so 
that's better at least, you know, now I've kind of taken over, but that's just, it's definitely not my favorite. I love this one. I love this one. And I love where this one is going. I think the, the last three, and that's one thing great about this kind of an exercise is I tend to get better as I get, get my ideas out, you know, and I would have never come out in these three um, if I wouldn't have done this. And I love this. I think they're beautiful. The colors are great. And just the way they came together are lovely. And I got some nice um, leaf practices trying to figure out which brush, you know, to use. So I learned something there. Love it. Okay. All right. Well, that was fun. So tell me which one was your favorite of these. And if I left anything out or, you know, you'd like to know what the colors were of a certain piece or something, just let me know. This is number one. This is two. This is three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. All right, guys, you have a great day day or night whatever you're doing and I'm glad you painted with me and you're just chilling I would also really encourage you to go join my group page and if you want to take uh, my beginner sketchbook class then you are welcome to it it's at JacquelineJacks.com just look for watercolor classes and I will link that below for you have a good day and happy painting